Alright, welcome back. In this video, we will program the movement of the ball, and we will learn about directions and degrees in this video. So, I'm going to get right to it. I'm going to select the basketball sprite right over here. So if you don't have it selected, select it now and bring in a starter code block from the events section. So bring in when flat clicked. I'm going to zoom into the code to make it very visible. And I'm going to bring in a forever block. So when the flag is clicked forever, the ball is going to move and if it's on the edge of the screen is going to bounce. So here's what I'm going to bring into the code. I'm going to go to motion and instead of changing X by a number of positions or changing Y by a number of positions, I'm going to bring in this first move 10 steps. And then I'm going to bring in this special if on edge bounce. So when the flag clicked, Forever, the ball is going to move 10 steps, and if on edge, the ball is going to bounce. Now, this blue block move 10 steps is a little bit special. If you remember from the earlier video, we programmed the platforms by changing their X coordinate by either 10 or negative 10. And we learned about the X and Y coordinates. This change X by whatever amount, and change y by whatever amount they basically move the sprite towards the right hand side or the left hand side direction and change y by a certain amount will move the sprite in the up or downwards direction now this move 10 steps block is a little bit different because it allows the sprite to move this many steps in whatever direction it's pointing to all right, small explanation break. So I have here a small dummy project that I will use to explain directions and degrees for you. You don't need to do anything or to create any new project. I only have this little sprite in the form of a car that I'm going to use to explain directions. So notice that this car is pointing towards the right hand side. And if you take a close look, the direction value is set to 90. This is 90 degrees. 90 degrees is the default direction for any sprite that you create in Scratch. And 90 degrees means pointing to the right hand side, much like this car is being turned. Let's play around with this little car to see how it can be turned. So if I click on this direction, notice this little pop up and we have a little helper icon in the form of a circle, which will help us set up directions. So if I change the direction to be zero, then the car will point upwards. If I want to increase the direction, I can drag this little arrow icon and notice the car can turn to the right and its direction value increases up until it reaches 90, which is pointing to the right. You can turn the car to the right even more than that until the car starts pointing downwards and its direction starts increasing up until the value 180 degrees. If I bring the car back to zero and I start turning it to the left of that, then that means subtracting from zero. That means turning the direction into a negative value. So notice that as I start turning the car to the left, its direction decreases. That is, it becomes more negative until it reaches minus 90 degrees, which means the car turning to the left. We can turn the car even further to the left, making the direction even more negative until the car starts pointing downwards up until the point where we get to minus 180 degrees. So from the direction zero, you can turn 180 degrees to the right and 180 degrees to the left. That means a total possible rotation of 360 degrees. So if I tell the car to rotate 360 degrees, either to the right or to the left, then that means not changing anything at all. Let me show you. So if I tell the car to be in direction 29 degrees, okay, what's 360 plus 29? Well, it's 389. So if I 
change the direction to be 389 degrees, then if I hit enter, the car will still point to the same 29 degrees because the editor was smart enough to figure out that I added another 360 degrees rotation, which has no effect. Now, before we move on, I'd like to ask you a question. What do you think would happen if I changed the direction of the car by 180 degrees, either to the left or to the right? So I'm going to go to motion here and I am going to add this turn right and turn left and I'm going to fill in 180 degrees in both. Without clicking on them to see what it actually does, what do you think would be the effect of turning the car right 180 degrees and turning the car left 180 degrees? I'd like you to pause the video and think about what would happen if you clicked on these blocks. And then, if you have an answer, click on the blocks to see if you were right. So, what did you find? You probably found that if you click on either the turning right by 180 degrees or turning left by 180 degrees, the car will turn in the opposite direction. So if I click on this block, see how the car turns in the opposite direction? If I click multiple times, the car just flips its direction around. Regardless of whether I click on the turn right by 180 degrees or the turn left by 180 degrees. Alright, so keep that in mind. Turning right or left by 180 degrees will turn a sprite in the opposite direction. So, let's bring what we've learned to our little Pong game. So we're programming the basketball sprite and I want the basketball sprite to start in the dead center of the screen, so that is at x and y equals zero, and I want the ball to point into a random direction. So how do we do that? Well, we are going to go to the motion section in the code, and I'm going to bring in this go to x and y block. I'm going to specify x to be zero and y to be zero, Okay, and then I'm also going to bring in this block point in direction 90, but instead of 90, I'm going to put in a rounded block that will say random number between 0 and 360. That means any direction in the possible 360 degrees. So I'm going to go to the operators section, this green section, and I'm going to pick this rounded block, pick random 1 to 10. I'm going to snap it inside the 90 where the direction hole was, and I'm going to specify random 1 to 360. All right, so let's try it out. I'm going to click on the green flag and notice what the ball does. It starts in the center of the screen and it bounces in between the walls of the stage, which is awesome. If I start the project again, it always starts from the dead center of the screen and it shoots in a random direction. This is awesome. Now the ball bounces around the stage and it starts in the center of the screen. Alright, I'm going to stop the project now and I'm going to implement a small reflection mechanism. What do I mean by that? Well, when the ball touches either of the platforms, I want it to bounce back so that the ball only bounces in between the side walls of the stage and in between the two platforms, not go through the platforms like it now does. So let me do the following. I'm going to go to the control section, the orange section, and I'm going to bring in an if block. And in the diamond shaped hole, I'm going to go to sensing, and I'm going to bring in this first touching block. And instead of mouse pointer, I'm going to select down bar. So if the sprite touches the down bar, I want it to bounce back. For now, that will imply turning in the opposite direction. Now you learned a couple of minutes ago what turning in the opposite direction means. It means changing the direction by 180 degrees. So I'm going to go to motion and I'm going to take this turn block. And I'm going to turn right by 180 degrees. All right. Now, I'm going to bring this if block 
in between the two blue blocks in the forever loop. So let's click the green flag and see what happens. So the ball is moving in a random direction. And if it touches the red bar, the down bar, notice that it bounces back. All right, if I click the green flag again, because this exact example is not super conclusive, notice that the ball is now moving a little sideways, not necessarily up and down. And if it touches the red bar, it should go exactly 180 degrees back. See? It turns exactly in the opposite direction. All right, this is nice. I'm going to stop this and I'm going to add a similar condition for the up blue bar as well. So I'm going to go to control. I'm going to bring in an if block. And from the sensing, I'm going to add a similar diamond shaped touching block and I'm going to select up bar. All right. And inside, I'm going to, again, turn 180 degrees. So I'm going to go to motion. I'm going to bring in the turn block, specify 180 degrees inside. And I'm going to bring this block right below the other if block. So just like this. All right. So you have two if blocks one after another. And right now we should have an almost functional game. If I click the green flag now, we see that we can control both the blue and the red bar, but we get into this very silly situation where the ball can bounce back in between the players, which is not a very fun game because it can get stuck like that forever. All right, so we need a smarter way to have the ball bounce in between the platforms. So I'm going to stop the project now and I'm going to implement an actual proper bouncing. So the ball will move something like this into the platform and instead of bouncing 180 degrees back, it will bounce like it were reflected from the platform. This is going to be interesting. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take the turn right by 180 degrees and I'm going to pull it into the open space. And instead of that, I'm going to bring in the point in direction block. And instead of 90, I'm going to go to operators, the green section, and I'm going to bring in this rounded difference operator here. And in the first hole, I'm going to put in 180. And in the other hole, I'm going to put in the direction of the sprite. So I'm going to go to motion and I'm going to scroll down and bring in this rounded direction block. So what this blue block does is it sets the direction of the sprite to be 180 minus what the direction of the sprite was before this blue block was executed. Let me show this to you with the little car project that I have here. So I have this little car sprite and I'm going to remove the turn blocks and I'm going to add the point in direction block and I'm going to have the same operation here. So I'm going to go to operators, bring in the difference block and I'm going to say 180 minus and I'm going to go to motion and I'm going to bring in the direction value. So let me show you the effect of that. Assume the car goes like this towards the edge of the stage and I hit this block. Look what happens. The car turns as though it bounces off the edge of the stage. If it goes like this and I hit this block again, same effect. It seems as though it's reflected off of the horizontal edge of the stage. So this is the effect that we're after with our basketball sprite bouncing off of our horizontal platforms. So I'm going to go back to my project and I'm going to copy this point in direction 180 minus direction block by right clicking on the blue area, duplicate and put it under the second if block, the touching up bar and the turn right by 180 degrees. I'm going to drag it out. I'm going to remove it. Now, the expected effect is going to be that when the basketball touches 
either of the bars, the blue or the red one, is going to bounce off of them as it bounces off of the left and right edges of the screen. So let me click on the flag now and let me control the players up and down bars. So we have here the exact effect that we're after. So notice how the ball bounces back and forth between the platforms. This is very nice. I'm going to stop the project now. All right, so we've done a lot in this video. We programmed the ball to bounce off of the stage and off our player's platforms by implementing a reflection mechanism by changing direction. This is very cool. In the next video, we will implement the rest of the game, including scoring. I'm really excited, so I'm waiting for you in the next video.